Hi, this is Joel Persinger, the gun guy. We're out here in the desert. <clears throat> I've been shooting video all day and shooting guns all day and having a real good time, except for the heat. It is really hot doing this. In fact, I think we've decided we're never going to come out here again in August. But uh, I just got the dirty look from John Ricci, my buddy. Uh, because, like He told me earlier, the heck with shooting. When you finish shooting video, we're going to go get a beer and a burrito and sit in air conditioning somewhere. So that's probably what we're going to do. But I do want to shoot the Mini 14 while we're here. We've got a big red gong out there. It's a 12-inch gong. And I'm going to see if I can hit it freehand with the Mini. Now, it's way out there. In fact, we've been shooting iron sights at it, and the sight, front sight pretty much covers a silly thing up. So it's pretty hard to hit at this distance. I have no idea how far it is, but suffice it to say, it's a lot farther than I normally shoot freehand. Mini 14s, the older ones, have a reputation for being somewhat inaccurate. And that's because of the very thin barrel that they were built with partially it has to do with the gas block and some other things too. But the thin barrel has a lot of vibration harmonics to it. So on this one, I went ahead and picked up an AccuStrut. That's this thing on the bottom right here. I put that on there. That seems to have given it some additional rigidity and solved some of the harmonic problems. And then I bedded the stock and a buddy of mine who's a gunsmith did a little trigger work on it. So it should be a little better. We'll try it freehand and see. Uh, I have an Omega Ranges. Uh, uh, rail on it, and on top of that, I've got a very inexpensive True Glow red dot. You know, kind of, kind of a neat little red dot. Doesn't cost a lot of money. We're going to try it with a red dot because the sights on a Mini 14 are so coarse. That front sight's so coarse, it would easily cover up the target and I'd never be able to see it. So here we go. Let's see if I can shoot it freehand and hit it. John's going to call him out as I shoot, and then as soon as I'm done, we'll go one up there and see what we did, and then we'll try it off the bench and see how that goes. All right, here we go. Where am I at, John? That looked like it went right. Yep. Hit? No, right. Right, okay. Looks like you went under it. Same. Very bottom, you got it. Very bottom where? Very bottom of the gong, you hit it. Okay, you, you came up just a little bit, still near the bottom. Oh, on the left-hand side of the gong. Oh, what, I get one? You got three. I got three? All right, I got three. Let's, uh, let's go down there and take a look at them. Well, John, it looks like I got better hits than I got with the, uh, with the Sega. I only got one, That's right. freehand but not nearly what I got with the AR. The right. AR was a nice, fairly good group and, uh, and all over this. Um, and I'm wondering if, I mean, one, I don't think the minis inherently are as accurate as an AR is anyway. And then the other thing is, um, I got to thinking about it after we shot it, we're shooting 55 grainers, and I know that has a one in seven twist in it, where the AR has a one in nine. So I'm wondering if maybe it's over-rotating the lighter bullets a little bit. Right. Because I've noticed on the range, out at 100 yards, 150 yards, I get tighter groups if I'm shooting 72 grainers or 69 or something. If I shoot the 55s, it tends to broaden out a little bit. So anyway, that's the deal with the mini. We got, what do we get, four or three? You got four. If you we got this one. Oh, I see. Okay, we got one on the edge. We got one here, one here, one here, and one here. That could be, it looks like the, the gun is shooting left a little bit because my point of aim was here. And with the red dot, unlike the irons, at least I was able to see the target because I could adjust the intensity of the dot. Whereas with the irons, I was, you know, if I put the iron on there, covered up the whole stinking target, it's so far away. But the red dot, I was able to actually put the red dot in here, and it probably covered up, you know, a fist size area of the target. But it looks like it's shooting a little left. So what we're going to do now is go back and shoot it on a bench. And I'll just use some Kentucky windage rather than adjusting it. And we'll see, and I'll aim kind of over here, and we'll see if we can get as many on target as possible and come out and look at it again. All right, we're back under the awning. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, we're grateful. Uh, you know, we actually had some cloud cover come over, with, for which, and I'm telling you, it dropped, what do you think, guys? It had to drop like 10 oh, yeah. degrees at least immediately, and we were out there checking the target, and we were so grateful because everything is so stinking hot. Look, I want to just advise you, if you want to start a YouTube channel, don't be as stupid as me. Don't plan a, a shoot on a hot day in August in the, su in the sun, in the summer, in the desert. Um, it's my fault. So I, I, beer is on me, burritos and dinners on me in an air-conditioned 
place. Hallelujah. But in the meantime, we still are going to shoot the mini here from this bench rest. Um, we did discover, I looked at the ammo, and yeah, sure enough, we're shooting 55 grainers. Uh, it's been my experience. I've had this thing a long time that it just doesn't like the lighter ammo. It tends to have a really, uh, kind of, honestly, it's a minute of milk jug uh, with 55 grain ammo. Um, and that's a lot, that's quite a bit out there farther than 100 yards. So it's, it's going to be probably, you know, uh, if it's not bigger than a, you know, an elephant, I don't know that I can hit it at this distance, but I'm going to try. We got three uh, hits on it. We'll see. We, we found it shooting a little bit to the left. I'm not going to worry about adjusting the sight here. I'm just going to use some Kentucky windage and we'll see if we can clobber it uh, more than three times. Because we, I think we barely got three hits, didn't we, John? We got, or did we get barely four? Barely four. We got barely, because we had the one just on the edge, right? That's right. Okay, so we're going to see if we can improve on that. Uh, it's windy out here, so shooting freehand's a little hard anyway. And then frankly, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm a gun guy and I love shooting, but I've carried a handgun most of my life for work and for other things. Never been much of a rifle guy. So uh, I'm sure that somebody, and maybe you, I don't know, if you're a rifle shooter, you might be able to do a better job at this than I. But uh, in order to keep it consistent, have the same guy behind the gun, we'll try it again. And uh, I probably ought to have some ear protection, huh? As well as uh, the rest of us, so let's do that. Um, the gun is not loaded, so we're good to go. Uh, I'll put it on safe anyway, just because. I can do this. I don't need the glove anymore, I don't think. All right, ears. You know, we were shooting a video one time, and I rang out, I was shooting this thing, John, and I think I cranked off four rounds, and we were at P2K range, I think, weren't we, Nick? And I realized all of a sudden I'd have my hearing protection in, and the testimony to how deaf I am at this point, I didn't notice. <laughs> so that's pretty bad. All right, so we have a mag in the gun. Uh, we have a round in the chamber. Safety's off. Here we go. All right, call them out for me, John, would you? I will. And I need to turn this uh, dot up just a little bit, and it's, so it's covering up the majority of the site. All right, a little Kentucky windage to the right. Oh, you got it all the way on the right hand side. Okay, I uh, came back a little bit. Couldn't see where it went. Uh, looks like I had a little issue here. Well, let's fix that. I've got this crummy aftermarket mag. One thing about these rifles, I'll tell you, they run really well if you have a Ruger mag. But these crummy mags just don't always feed right. I should have put a rigger mag in it, but that's all right. Here we go. Couldn't see where it went. Okay, on the far right side, you got it. Uh, a little closer to the center. That was pretty good. Huh. I think that might have been it. I think I'm dry, dude. I don't know how many rounds that was. You got four hits. Four hits? That you can see? Yeah. Well, you know, well, he can see four. I don't know. We're going to go down there and check it out again. Maybe I didn't do any better on a rest than I did freehand. Uh, we'll see. We'll meet you down there. Well, all right. We made the trip out into the heat again. Our cloud cover is out of here and it's back to being 115 or 117 or whatever it is out in the scorching heat and it's a bit of a trek out here to cart the camera tripod and my son because he just couldn't make it john and i had to drag him out here no i'm kidding nick <laughs> he's our camera guy um, it looks like i over adjusted in my kentucky windage and aimed too far to the right because we got uh, one here one here one here, one here, and one that went right underneath the leg here and struck the back leg right here. So if we look at the grouping and count the shot into the leg, it's got a really good solid group, particularly at this distance, which is way the tar out here. Um, that's not too bad on a 12 inch gong with a mini 14. So I'm, I'm fairly pleased with it. It's certainly not as accurate as the Air 15, which was just tons ac more accurate. I mean, that had a nice group to it. Um, but it seems to have performed as well as the Sega, and uh, maybe a little better. But uh, I would say it's as good as the Sega. So if you're considering any of those rifles for defensive purposes, I would say any, any one of those rifles, the AR-15, 
the Sega, the, uh, the Mini 14 are all going to get the job done for you. And the new Mini 14s, honestly, are a lot more accurate just inherently out of the box than the older ones. And I've had to have some work done on that one. Uh, certainly, I think of the bunch, the Air 15 is going to, or the Air 15 is going to, going to be much more accurate. Even the the Wasser 10 That's right. did a great job. I mean, from the bench, it was awesome and it shot really well. So there's another uh, possibility for you. Now, if you live in California, you got all the issues with the bullet cage, bullet button, all the stuff we've already talked about. Um, and if you live in the city, where the maximum distance you're probably ever going to shoot in a city is going to be what, 25, 50 yards to defend yourself, and that's a stretch, then I would say any of these rifles are going to be really solid for you. All right, that's enough of that. We're about to turn into living bacon, if we live. So we're going to get the heck out of the heat and get back in the shade. Don't you think that's a good idea? Absolutely. Let's get out of here. All right, let's go back into the heat, back out of the heat and into the shade. I'm the old guy. Hey, John, stick around and paint that, would you? <laughs> Well, thank you very much for watching my videos. I hope you had a little fun watching us shoot the Mini 14. We came up with a couple of conclusions from that. One is, unless you're using factory Ruger mags, sometimes you get a funky mag like this, and then you get double feeds and other stuff. I, I, in all the years I've had this thing, and I've got a number of Ruger mags, I've never had it fail me. But with this particular mag, and I got a couple other crummy ones, um, they seem to do that. I only use them when I'm shooting for fun. But I think I'm convicted by that. I always tell my students the best way to fix a funky magazine is put it on a rock, get a ball-peen hammer, and crush it and throw it away so that the stupid thing doesn't get you killed one day. Well, this thing, even John said, why don't we shoot it? <laughs> I think he might be right. So this is the last time you'll see this one. I think I'm going to crush it, shoot it, or whatever, and we'll throw it in the trash, and that'll be the end of that. Uh, the Mini 14 is a great gun. Uh, like I said, not as I think we just found out not as accurate as the... Uh, as the other rifle, the AR-15 for sure, uh, not even close. The newer ones are going to be more accurate. The older ones, we, I've discovered personally, really like the heavy bullets. So you, we got a decent group out to that distance, which was significant. I don't know how far away it was, but I mean, it's out there. Just trust me, it's way out there. Uh, so the fact that we hit it at all is probably a good thing. Um, but certainly the groups would be tighter, I think, with the heavier bullets, so be aware of that as well. If you're buying it in California and you want a fully functional rifle, like the Sega is a good one, this is a good one, you don't have the bullet button issue and all that kind of stuff. And particularly if you live in an urban area, great rifle for you because you're not shooting that far. You're not making shots like that. You're going to be shooting down the street, across the street, inside your house, those kind of things. Uh, and, and you're not even going to be shooting in the street unless it's a horrible situation where law and order has gone away and you have, you know, and, and I don't know what the likelihood of that is. But if you're worried about that, this is a great rifle for it, as is the Sega and the other rifles we've checked out in the previous videos. So check out new videos. We've got new videos coming up. We've got previous ones we've done on these types of rifles, and we tested each one on the bench and, uh, and freestanding. Free on that same target way out there, that same gong. So you can look at those and see how they did. All of the rifles performed very, very well. Please like, subscribe, wherever the button is. The more of my videos you watch, the more videos we can make. I'm really, really grateful that you watch them. If you'd like some very inexpensive, very solid ammo to go out and shoot, I encourage you to contact my friend, John Ricci. Uh, he's my buddy. Uh, and we're very good friends and brothers in Christ, and he, he provides the ammo for Gun Guy TV. And as you can see, it works very well. So we're very grateful to John. We'll make sure we've got a link here in the description. And also, if we can figure out how to do it, uh, we'll put it on the video so you can send him an email. That's the best way to contact him. If you'd like to contact me, have questions or suggestions or anything like that, post a comment, please. We want to know what you think. If you'd like to contact me personally, you can send me an email at, g at, uh, in, at my Gmail account, which is TV at gmail.com or you can go to my website at gunguy.tv and visit that and then use the contact form and you can reach me that way. Uh, visit us on Facebook please and please share us all over the place. We're trying to make this work so we can do great videos for you. Lastly, I would suggest that you join the National Rifle Association. It costs you less than a box of ammo to do it. We've posted a link right below here in the, in the description so that you can do it and save yourself 10 bucks. Thank you for watching. Have a great week. And uh, we'll see you next time in future videos on Gun Guy TV. Coming back again tomorrow, right? <laughs> I don't know, dude. It was hot. I'm grateful we got out of here, but 
I think, look at that, you can feel my hat. Feel the top of my hat. Feel the top of my hat, John. <laughs> feel the top of the hat, even the hat's hot, dude. So I'm getting paid I mean, that's for this, ridiculous. Right? You're part of the family. What? Uh -oh. The fam you're part of the family. The family. But I do understand that it's going to rocket down to 107 tomorrow. Right. Rocket down? Ah, uh, hi. Yeah. It. Is it sad that the shade itself was a bar volley about 105? <laughs> it was pretty bad. And the so, cloud was like, oh, oh, it's not 115 anymore. Okay, well, guys, I've had to stand in the heat more than you, so I have two questions. First, who's packing up all the gear? Well, let's do it together. <laughs> You're the young guy. We're the old guys. Thank you. Who's cleaning the guns? Oh, well, I got no money for that. My back. What? Oh, <laughs> what? Me? My, an my ankle hurts. I, oh. Why should I clean them? Oh, I can't do it. My ankle. Oh, oh my back. Oh. My back. Well, my your leg. Back actually hurts. <laughs> my leg. <laughs> my leg. All right. Uh. Okay, guys. Let's go ahead and pack it up and get out of here. Uh, let me you know when you pack it up again. Let me know when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we're all three of us are sitting <laughs> here. Then. <laughs>